Here we are, lovely Sunday afternoon, and today we're going to read through the kind of climate denier emails that scientists get on a regular basis. So buckle up, take a seat, enjoy the ride. Okay, let's begin, shall we? Hello. Your work on climate change is intriguing, but there is a bigger picture that you do not yet see. Our sun is not orbiting the galaxy. It is spiralling into the centre. Were we orbiting the galaxy before? We don't have five billion years left. We are at the end of the spiral. Global warming is a direct result of increasing proximity to the centre of the galaxy. Please visit my website and share with your colleagues. Hello. Your work in the Getz region is commendable, but there is a bigger picture that you need to be aware of. Sounds familiar, right? Global warming is a direct result of increasing proximity to the centre of the galaxy. There was no big bang. All the stars in all the spiral galaxies are not orbiting their centres, they are all spiralling into their centres. Each day we get 11.8 million miles closer to the centre. Here's the reality that you overlook. Okay, here's another one. I'll preface this one because this one is from a prolific emailer. We're going to call him Big Dave. Ahem. Did Three degrees is nonsense. nonsense. Humans are not influencing the climate or the weather. Get over it. <sighs> there is no golden age of climate, and if you believe that CO2 causes the climate to warm, and you believe that being warmer is superior to being colder, then you have already admitted your inane stupidity. You might as well compare earthquakes to eating omelettes. Sincerely. <laughs> Hold up. Wow, one of my favourite things. Bad graphs. These are beauties. Times New Roman font. Cream background. Horizontal axis grid lines. We've even got that rare bird. Vertical axis grid lines. They look like they've come straight from 2004. I can practically hear the dial-up modem tone just from looking at these. <clears throat> anyway, punctuation is banned on YouTube. I don't know if you know this. It's not allowed. You'll see why. Based on the fracture of the Larsen Sea ice shelf, in first being noticed in November 2010, its extent and width at that time and rate of its growth over the few years following, I suggest the possibility that the fracture of the Larsen Sea ice shelf might well have been caused by the Indian Ocean tsunami 26th of December 2004 following seabed earthquake. Dash, 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 dash. If I take the tsunami as radiating in a circle, then the radius is 13,000 kilometres at Larsen Sea ice shelf distance, so the quantity of tsunami water per metre of impacted face is 30 billion divided by brackets, 26 million times pi, close brackets, equals 367 metres cubed. For one metre of sea level rise extending to 367 metres from the ice shelf face, I compute 367 times 42,000 times 10,000 equals 154 billion newton metres of torque per metre of fracture run at the fracture point using a 42 kilometre width. <laughs> what? I don't know what it is about climate deniers that always seem to be retired engineers or really love big numbers. Keep off! Angry face. My petite American sweetheart! Love heart. Why don't you find a single girl, Maxi babe? Angry face. <clears throat> oh, no. Oh. There he is again, Big Dave, at it again. New day, new scientist to harass on the internet. Dear I'm sure your research has covered periods within our history when temperatures were higher than today, but CO2 half of what it is today. You did do that, didn't you? Well, just in case you did not. 8,000 years ago, temperature was two degrees higher than today, with CO2 at 200 parts per million. Explain. Between 1910 and 1940, temperature rose at the same rate as between 1970 and 2000, yet CO2 could only have been an issue after 1980. Explain! As usual, the BBC never avoid an opportunity to invert science and the laws of physics to create the illusion of a disaster when there is no disaster. It's about time you did your research correctly, taking 4.5 billion years of history into account. In historical terms, your sample size is just 0.0000026431 insignificant. Heaven help us all if your contribution tonight is the best we can get for the cost of your education. Not even a sincerely this time, I mean Big Dave is hacked off. Crikey, don't want to uh, stir that pot any further. I read your article with interest and offer you the following. Changes in velocity require that accelerations be at play, and consequently, that changes in forces come to pass. I suggest that a chain reaction of the conditions controlling Earth's angular momentum sets the pace for the phenomenon that you outline. I suspect that it's the same culprit dictating the slowdown of the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation. Both are dynamic abnormalities, can worms. Best of luck finding the root cause of the curiosity that you've sketched out. 
smiley face. This one is sent to the wrong person, addressed to a different scientist. And I'll read you the response as well. Ms. Pretty sure it's Professor, actually. Your recent article exemplifies how some climate scientists fail to meet professional standards of scientific objectivity. While your piece explores fuel, dryness and weather as factors of current wildfire intensity, it fails to examine frequency of arson, as well as unintentional human-caused ignition events as a potentially contributing variables. Your work would be more credible if it included at least a mention of anthropogenic ignition as a factor. Allow me to contribute to your database. Perhaps you missed it. There's a link. Best regards. And here's the responses. It's good, it's worth it. Hi, First, I'm not Professor Professor, it was Professor. You sent this to the wrong email address. Second, you said it yourself. Professor piece explores fuel, dryness and weather as factors of current wildfire intensity. Intensity, not ignition. Regardless of the ignition source, the fires are bigger, hotter and harder to extinguish due to climate change related factors like higher temperatures and increased fuel loads. Third, the police and CFA have debunked the false claim that 183 people have been arrested on arson charges. Most fires are actually ignited by dry lightning, often due to pyrocumulus clouds, i.e. severe weather caused by the fires themselves. Good day. Mic. Drop. So, um, tune in next time for another episode of Climate Deniers. I mean, no. Thanks. Just no.